Heading into the holiday season, you might feel a bit more stressed than usual. And if stress causes hair loss and hair loss causes stress, what can you do to spot it? And what are some common misconceptions? Beauty expert and hair loss specialist, Leah Scheibel is here to tell us more. And I know a lot of it is genetic. So much of it is genetic. Most people I have come into my office, men and women, really believe that their hair loss is from hormones, it's from thyroid, it's from stress, when really the majority of it is genetic hair loss. So we scope the scalp, we take microscopic photos, and we really see tiny hairs and we see big hairs. And so that is called miniaturization. These tiny hairs sometimes come from that genetic hair loss. And so what's the easiest way to spot it at home, right? Yep. All we do is go to the back area of our hair here. So feel the back area of your hair. Okay. This is our donor region. This is our healthiest hair. This hair obviously we know isn't getting heat treated as much. It's right. not getting as much hair product. And then we want to feel this area right here, our temples. And if these hairs, you feel them, they feel a little bit more cotton-like. They feel a little bit finer. Those are the hairs that really don't get, come past baby length. You know, you're doing your hair and you're seeing these baby hairs. That signifies genetic hair loss. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we are really looking for those signs so that we can fix it. Treat it, right? Now, yeah. our brave model, Nicole, is allowing us to take a very, very close look at her scalp. Yes, and so what we're seeing here, this is a little picture of her hair. We are gonna go ahead and take a peek. I'm gonna show you actually her donor region first. That's so the that best hair. I never the best do hair. that. Yep, this and is also our very the best sun hair. doesn't get back Sun there. doesn't hit it. So you can see these hairs in the photo. These hairs are really thick, right? We see a lot of really mm -hmm. big, thick hairs. And then we wanna come all the way up to the temple, right? This is our transition area. Oh, I see it's very see different. See they're fine? Yeah. Yeah, so lots of fine hairs. And a lot of times you'll notice with genetic hair loss, these baby hairs don't ha hold hair color. So you get your hair colored and then a week later, these guys are just thinner. They're like not the same color as the color that you got your hair colored because it's not big enough and dense enough to hold pigment. So those hairs really aren't doing their job. Let's go one finger length behind the hairline. All right. This is another area that women are a little bit more fine and thin. Oop, we didn't get our picture there. I see, okay, yeah, it popped, there we go. Yes, so you can see here that we've got our big hairs and you can see these tiny hairs. Like some of them are big and some of them are small. You're, Most of the reasons that that happens is genetics. Okay, and your clients range from 12 to 95? 12 to 95, Men yeah. and women. And sadly, we're seeing so many more clients much younger just because of all the environmental factors, mm -hmm. all the things we're eating, yep. everything that comes in contact with us, it does affect our hair. And so we're seeing clients younger and younger. And the definitive piece is that little bit of genetic, even in kids. Right, so, and it's not just maternal, that's a myth. Right, so one of the myths is that we always think it's mom's dad's side. And so they're like, what does your mom's dad's hair look like? But we're half of our parents, 50-50, and so it can come from your mom, it can come from your dad, and it can skip generations. We have siblings that have it and siblings that don't, so. And if you're talking about seeing patients as young as 12 and some teenagers, yes. what can you do for that age group? Or what can you do for any age group? And yes. I assume it's, um, the earlier you catch it, the, the, the more, yes. yeah, the more, the more treatment options you have. Yeah, and uh, it's harder, right? It's, it's a little more heartbreaking to see a kid in there who's just like going through puberty, high school so hard, losing your hair is really really tricky and men yeah. themselves actually go through two hairlines in their lifetime and one of them kind of sheds out 18 to 24 so a lot of times men don't know that that hairline is supposed to go anyway and that can be scary on and they own. panic thinking am I losing my hair I'm losing teenager. my hair yeah exactly but that's normal that is normal unfortunately and something else that's very normal is 100 and 150 hairs to shed each day so if we aren't shedding that many hairs, then we know that it's not growing or if we're shedding too many, we know something else is happening. So Leah, if someone's concerned about hair loss, whether for themselves, a parent, a relatives, a child, yes. how can they come to you to do this kind of testing? Yes, we're at National Hair Loss Medical Aesthetics and we can do an immune test. We can pluck six hairs to kind of see anything that's happening around them and we can scope them and see if they've got that little bit of genetic. Thank you so much, Leah. Nicole, very brave. So brave. Very brave. Uh, your scalp's gorgeous. Exactly. And right. so are you. Very impressed. <laughs> very, very sturdy hair follicles, Leah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stick around.